Hello there, internet. This is your friend, Michael Thurber. I hope that you are doing incredible today. I'm here to tell you about the latest single that's coming out from my project, Opus Mankindness, April 23rd. It's called Let It Go, and it features one of my dear friends and one of my favorite musicians, the incredible trumpet player and tuba player from The Late Show with Stephen Colbert from his own band, The Hunter Tones. Check them out. If you don't know who I'm talking about already, it is the genius John Lampley. So it comes out April 23rd, but until then, I have been sitting in my studio working on this song for the last month. So I figured why not come along with me and we can check this tune out together. You can get a glimpse of how my brain works, how I approach making music. We can look at the logic session and you get a sneak peek of the song. So let's do this. All right, let me get this opened up. So this is the song. It's called Let It Go. Uh, originally, it was actually called I Used To. You can see up there at the top of the Logic track. For starters, uh, let's just play. I'm just going to play you like um, the first interlude into the second verse because that gives you an idea of what the song is. You get to hear some of what Lampley's doing on this. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's check it out. All I know, I'm better off when I let it all go. my time slow down i used to want to be productive but now i drink good wine Give me that sometimes i even got bored. So bored but now the day is never long oh. enough i can't believe i thought i knew it all because now i can't stop I'm learning good. stuff i used to want to tell the world that i'm perfect okay all right i'm not gonna give you any more you gotta wait for april 23rd for the whole thing uh but yeah, let's break this down a little bit. So basically, when I usually start writing, like the first thing is I try to just get interested in something. Um, it could be literally anything. It could be like a melodic idea, um, you know, a beat, a uh, guitar lick, like whatever it is. But I just try to get interested and focused so that I can start to get into some sort of like creative flow state as quickly as possible. Um, so for this tune, if I remember correctly, it was really two things that sort of got me super engaged. Uh, the first thing was this sample that I found. Let me play it. Woo! <laughs> I just found this online. Uh, and this is like a power tool sample kit. It's like folly sounds. So this is like the sound of, I don't know, some sort of like machine working. So I chopped it up a bunch and stuttered it and rebounced it. It also had this really weird room sound in it. So I used uh, like a D reverber and got a lot of the room sound out of it. But it still just sounds sort of like funky and weird. Um, so this is what I first got interested in. So I just sort of had this on repeat. And then the next thing that came was uh, I was playing around with this Arturia synth that I have that I love. And I found this really cool sound. the next uh that was sort of like the next thing and, and it sounded just like so weird to me the two things together were so quirky but it grooved so hard so i just kind of put this on repeat uh and walked around with it for like a couple days and just was sort of like voice memo myself like that's usually where lyrics start for me is i'll just get out my phone while i'm listening to something on my computer or whatever and just anything that's coming to mind or a lot of the time it happens to me when i'm in motion like walking or out for a jog so I'll start to record any of the lyrical ideas that I have and um, and just see, just start to try to make sense of what I'm talking about. You know, at first it's just like mumbles, uh, but then gradually things start to like feel right. And for this one, I sort of got into this pattern of like, I used to, but now I do this. And so it's sort of this like A, B lyric form sort of. Uh, and all the things that I was coming up with were like super, super philosophical, like deep like life ideas, or at least I thought they were deep, uh, <laughs> deep, deep, like, you know, questions and, and, you know, like concerns and insecurities. Mad at people, so what a waste of time. I started kind of like putting I used to get sad on myself, stuck in my mind. 
I used to want to change the world. I started to sort of feel like, okay, so like this is what I'm talking about. It's sort of like in my mind, the whole song is taking place, like me sort of trying to like sort different ideas out and stuff. Uh, and this took me a long time to try to figure out how to get this vocal to sit in the mix with this synth and drum because again the drum is really weird and has all this like slushy room sound stuff slushy i said uh slushy room sound stuff that's like cool but really difficult to kind of like figure out what to do with and how to make it you know work second verse when we get into this this is really funny because so what happened was once i started writing in the tune and getting into it I started to realize that the pitch of this weird little synth thing that I had was like not set to like standard, like well-tempered, like A440. It was like a little bit flat. So when I started to sing to it, um, I, I don't have perfect pitch. I only have relative pitch. So I, I thought it was all cool. But then when I started to add other stuff to it, like other keys to it and everything, I was like, oh man, it's out of tune. So at first I started to be like, oh, I got to fix the synth, but then I listened to it more and I thought it was kind of amazing. So check it out when the piano comes in. Yes, that's actually that guitar back there on loan to me from Charles Yang, the amazing violin player. It's like a 1960s guild. It's kind of hard to play, but it's got this super woody, like steely sound. And I just love it. Put it out in the ears. I think I put uh, the uh, Studer uh, tape machine on it. It sounds amazing. Yes. All right, so now we get into the bridge. Sometimes I think about some dent shit. crazy shit going on in here so the idea for this sort of started with all of these floaty pads so i have so much stuff going on crazy so that's like uh orchestral sounds this is like drifting brass sounds going through like harmonics and overtones and then strings. These are some string plugins, some VST, and then also real violins layered in there too. Some woodwind trills, and then a couple layers of Juno. And then a whole bunch of wild panning stuff, right? And then I got my friend Mark Dover to lay down this really cool clarinet bass line. So check this out when you add it in. This was awesome. So I had him play it in octaves. So this is the first octave right here. So what I did was I split this one out in stereo so it kind of has, you know, some texture, like a wider, you know, image. And then I put this one down in octave. And made it right down the center. And then I think I put, um, what did I put on it? uh like a like an octave synth like a sub synth on it so that it has an even lower octave to it so you get that low like 808 rumble then you put it all together sometimes i think about some dense shit Awesome. So you get the idea. Uh, I don't want to give away too much. So then this is where John Lampley comes in and this beautiful little interlude. Check out. So yeah, I mean, that's just like the genius of John Lampley. Um, he just has all these beautiful layers. He made this horn arrangement himself. I didn't do anything. I, I had nothing to do with it. I literally just sent him the track 
with like an open space in the middle of it and at the end it was like do whatever you want to do it's your feature uh, and this is what he came up with there's all this amazing comments. check it out amazing and i did very little to it he had already sent it to me it already had a gate on it so there was like bone dry no room sound i think i just added like some tape saturation and like a little bit of compression that was about it uh so let me get to the second verse which is like the same i used to always be rushing but now i take my time slow down i used to want to be productive but now I drink good wine. Give me that Malbec. Sometimes I even got bored. So bored. But now the yeah. So with this, I was just uh, I added some more layers to the drums, trying to keep the drums like as dry as possible and the vocal as dry as possible. I really, really like that sound. Uh, I love hearing the space in between the notes because I feel like it just gives it so much more impact. Um, what else is going on here? Yeah. So I have the the guitar doubling the bass line. That's like a sound I really love. You can check this out. Uh, check this out. Hey. Woo. We have a really cool transition into the trumpet solo. Check this out. <laughs> Yeah, again, so I just added a whole bunch of new layers to the drums. So there's a whole bunch of snaps and, and claps and clicks. And uh, and then I also did a cool thing here where I had the bass clarinet come back again. So you can check out the bass. So this is the bass by itself. And then... And I just love that sort of flanged sound where it's like the attack of the clarinet and the bass aren't like perfectly together, but it's got like such a vibe. Woo! And again, I did the same thing. I cut out a lot of the low end to let the bass take the most of the low end, but then left a lot of like the texture, like in the frequencies, like, you know, 600 and like a thousand just to get that like air. When you put it all together, it's just a crazy sound. Okay, I can't give it all away. I can't give it all away. This is my favorite part of the song, though. It's so good. But you got to hear what Lampley added. So I had this turnaround that I wrote, uh, and I was super psyched about it when I came up with it. I was like, oh, man, this is amazing. Like, this is this is it. Uh, and then I, but, but there were no lyrics on it, just um, the music. So it went like this. It sounded like this. <laughs> And Lampley heard that, and he sent it back to me with this on it. Check it out. Boy, you've got to let it go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's classic Lampley. It's so joyful. And he sounds so good on vocals, too. Uh, check it out. This is him. And then I added a ton Boy, of Boy, you've got to let it go. Oh, yeah. And so then I added like basically just doubles and quadruples and triples of all of that. But like you can see all these different stacks right here. Check it out. Boy, you've got to let it go. Oh, yeah. Woo. And that turned into this just like beautiful, joyful thing. Boy, you've got to let it go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's it for now. I hope you guys like this as much as I did. I love talking about music. Stay tuned, April 23rd, the third release from Opus Mankindness, Let It Go, featuring John Lampley. I can't wait for you guys to hear this. Peace, big love.